All right, now it's time once again for Talking Tractors, and we have with us author Lee Clancher, photographer, author. Tell us just a little bit about why you write about classic tractors. You could pick any subject in the world. Why is it classic tractors you decided to focus on? You know, when I first started, what really hooked me was innovation. When I started doing research, this was back in the 90s, I got an assignment to do a book, and uh, I, I came to understand that the tractor had such a huge effect on our society. I mean, without the mechanization of agriculture, uh, a line I love to use is the internet wouldn't have come about. Just because years ago, so much of our populace was concerned with feeding us, and right. now it's a, just a tiny, tiny portion. So that really attracted me. Um, I also fell in love with uh, some of the innovators that were part of it, and the one that first captured me was Burt Benjamin. Burt Benjamin designed the first Farmall tractor, and that's just a wonderful story. Uh, Burt was working on the motor cultivator, which was this spindly, absolutely terrible death trap of a machine that didn't really work. It was a wonderful idea, and Burt understood it was a great idea. So Burt was trying to make that into a tractor that would cultivate and plow, which was kind of the holy grail back in the 20s. At the same time, the Fordson had come, and IH was a massive company at that time, one of the biggest in the world, and their response was what a big company does, was get a big group together and decide the Fordson was great, we're gonna take that concept, re-engineer it, and make it good, because the Fordson was kind of cheap and had some flaws. So they were developing the McCormick Deering, and they had millions of dollars in the McCormick Deering which was not innovative in any real way. It was a great, well-built tractor, but it was pretty much the Fordson platform. And here's Bert off making this spindly, funny-looking tractor that people were trying to get rid of. Alexander Legg, who was his boss, loved it, supported him, and of course, uh, through a series of events, the Farmall became one of the most important machines in, in ag history. Uh, that kind of innovation and, and um, experimentation is, I just love that. Yeah, so you're steeped in that history, it catches your eye. There are a lot of farm books out there, that uh, farm tractor books out there that people can read and buy and enjoy. They're all great, but tell us a little bit about what makes the books you create just a little bit different, maybe from a photographic perspective. Absolutely, and, and from a photographic perspective, um, I really came at this as a landscape photographer. I loved the outdoors. I spent a lot of time there. And in, in college, when I started shooting, uh, one of the things I shot a lot at to begin with was the boundary waters and travel and outdoors. And when I came into tractors, I very quickly realized, you know, I am a gearhead, so there's, there's beauty in the tractor itself. Um, but there's also beauty around it. The farms are, are a naturally beautiful environment. And I, I think there's a whole, well, I know, there's a whole element of nostalgia. So a lot of the images as I create, I'm showing off that beautiful landscape. I'm trying to put the tractor in a natural spot, and I'm also trying to evoke some of that nostalgia. Some dramatic images for sure. And tell us a little bit about the art of John Deere, working with the Keller family and their Keller collection. That's another one you... Oh, on, huh? oh yeah, and that was a crazy project. We, for years, I, a number of us who had been working in the tractor publishing world knew that if you could do a book with a lot of John Deere's in a studio, photographed in a studio, it could probably be a very successful book. Um, and that's all about the beauty of the machines. But finding someone with enough machines and crazy enough to want to build a photographic studio, I believe that studio had to be 30, by 26 high by 20 feet. It was huge because it had to be big enough for the 8010 to fit in. Um, only the Kellers would do that. And, and <laughs> Bruce uh, is, runs a construction company so he could build the area and he was game for it. So we spent uh, more than a week at their place uh, photographing just that amazing collection of machines they have in a, a giant studio. Um, it was, again, about as much fun as you can have with a camera. <laughs> we had a lot of big equipment, a lot of lights. There was a lot of problem solving on the set. And um, the images that resulted were definitely something special. So that's your book, The Art of John Deere. But you've also not neglected red power over the years. Of course, you've chronicled red tractors, red four-wheel drive tractors. Uh, 
but also red machinery, right? Absolutely, and, and one of the really special projects was red combines. Um, that came about because we wanted to tell the axial flow story, and there'd really been never been a complete book on all the red combines. So for that book, we, we um, got pictures of all but three combines. Some of those early combines are hard to find, uh, but we have all of them, and the axial flow story was the absolute magic of that. Uh, that is, I'd say, along with the Farmall Regular, uh, the Magnum, a handful of other brands, that is one of the great red machines, significant red machines that was developed. So through your books, you're preserving agricultural history. Tell me what your feeling is about those collectors out there who are doing the same thing with their tractors and their farm machinery. Well, the collectors, the collectors are just a number of things that are amazing. First of all, what everybody's doing, whether they're you know, restoring a cub with a few parts from Steiner tractor, or they're the guys doing the very early ones where they're uh, essentially engineering and building parts to spec, they're, they're like historians. So they're keeping this history alive in a physical form. And, and in a way, I think a lot of people can enjoy. I think a lot of people can see a restored tractor and travel back in time to grandpa's farm. And it's just a great way to experience history. So Lee, thanks so much for sharing the story of some of your books and, and your passion for America's agricultural history. Thanks so much, Brian. It's been a pleasure. Hey, thanks for catching Classic Tractor Fever. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel right here on YouTube. You can also find even more videos and branded merchandise over on our website, ClassicTractorsTV.com. Now don't forget, hit that like and subscribe button.